Today we're talking about Pro Tools Edit Tools, and we'll get to it right after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, we are talking about Pro Tools Edit Tools, and this is continuing along with my Pro Tools series. So all of the edit tools are located up here in the top left corner. So look where my cursor is right now. You can see me kind of hovering over them. They're pretty much everything from where my mouse is now to over here, minus this little bottom row down here, okay? So we're gonna go over all these tools here. So by the end of this tutorial, you're gonna know how to use them like an expert. So the first tools we're gonna go over are all of these zoom tools. All right, so starting here to the left, this little arrow here pointing to the left, this is your horizontal zoom out. So if I click this, it's gonna zoom out. And you just keep clicking it to get to where you like it. And then over here on the right side, the arrow pointing to the right, this is your horizontal zoom in. As you can see, it's zooming in. And then this here is your actual audio zoom in and out. So the little arrow pointing down is going to shrink it here, the actual audio waveform. So check this out. See how it's shrinking? If I want to enlarge it, basically zoom in on it, I'll hit the up arrow here. And this comes in very handy if you recorded something that is, was recorded pretty soft for the most part. So you can zoom in on it that way, or you can actually go in and increase the um, audio here with the clip gain here. And this is of course, if you have just a really soft recording. So this will obviously have an adverse effect on the actual audio quality and sound, where this will not, this is just for visual, okay? So keep that in mind. And then here is our MIDI zoom in and out. So I don't have any MIDI data in here, but it would do the same thing that we did with the audio, but with MIDI data. And then below these, we can actually set up to five zoom presets. So if I wanted to, I don't know, let's make a preset like this. If I hold one or any of these numbers, just hold it with your mouse, click and hold, I can do Recall Zoom Preset or Save Zoom Preset. So we will save Zoom Preset, okay? And then we'll go away from it. Okay, then we'll click it again. And there, it recalls it. So pretty cool. So that is very useful um, when you're working in larger sessions to have these different presets that you set up for yourself. And then to the right here, this is Zoom Toggle. So this is going to basically um, open up all of your tracks here. So you can see I have some clothes. So um, if I click it, you see, it's at them all equally here. If I click it again, it goes back to how it was. So it's basically a zoom toggle that goes back and forth. That's what toggle means. And then next to that, we have uh, the zoom tool right here, the actual zoom tool. So it has two settings in it. It has normal zoom, and single zoom, okay? So if we're using normal zoom, you're gonna see if I go over this waveform here, I have a magnifying glass and it is a plus sign. So that means that we are going to uh, zoom in on it. See? And then if I wanna zoom out, well, what do I do? It's a plus sign. What, there's no setting here to change it to the other one, right? So all you need to do on your keyboard is hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and it changes to minus. Pretty cool, huh? Shortcut keys, that's definitely the key to being good at Pro Tools. <laughs> All right, so that's how you use that portion of the zoom tool. If you click and hold here, we can go to single zoom. And this is simply if you want to just do like a one shot. So if I click here, it went away from the zoom tool and then went over to my smart tool. So it basically just does it once and then it takes your um, editing tool back to a normal tool, which is the smart tool in my mind. But again, we'll get to that in a second. So those are all of the zoom tools. So next let's move on to the trim tool. All right, so for the trim tool, you'll see that I have it selected up here. It is lit up in blue. If I click on the down arrow, you'll see that standard TC and loop are my options. So starting with standard, if I go to the right or left of a clip, you'll see it creates this little bracket. 
If I click and then drag to the left and right, you'll see that I can shorten and lengthen it. And this also works on the other side of the clip, of course, so I can do the same right here. And that's all there is to the standard um, trim tool. If I go to TCE, this one's kind of interesting. So this is basically time compression and expansion. So what this means is, say I put a clip into my song that is not the same tempo of my song. If I edit it so that the clip starts right when the clip starts and ends right when the clip ends, and there's a way to do that with tab to transient, but that we're not talking about that in this tutorial, uh, you can essentially shorten or lengthen it to match any portion of the song. So I kind of made a little example here. It doesn't have any audio in it. It's just blank audio here. But say this was my clip right here, and it doesn't quite line up with the song. Say it needs to be a little bit longer. It needs to be two bars here. So I can simply click here and drag it to here, okay? And it made a time shift. So basically took all the audio in the clip and made it sync up to the length that I made it, okay? So there's not a guarantee that it's going to be in perfect tempo. It's how you edited it. So if your clip starts right at the beginning and ends right at the end, then yeah, there's a good chance it's going to line up perfectly. So keep that in mind. It's a tool I don't ever use, but it's in here if you need to. So I imagine it's probably more beneficial for genres that are using a lot of samples, maybe things like hip hop or EDM and stuff like that. So our last trim tool here is loop. And this one's pretty cool. So if you look at this little MIDI clip down here, I drew in a few notes. And what I want to do is actually create a loop. So if I hover over the left here, you'll see that I have a little bracket with an arrow. I don't want to use that. If I want to go down to the very bottom, you see it changes to a regular bracket, which is our basically our normal uh, trim tool. So let's drag it to where we want our loop to start. Okay, put it right there. And then on the right side, let's do the same and drag it to where we want our loop to stop. Do it there. And then simply click up here and that says, hey, that's where I want my loop to end. And that was all by me clicking while I have the bracket with the arrow on it. And it created this little arrow at the bottom. So now, check this out. If I drag it to the right, look at that. It creates a loop. So that's pretty cool. Um, do I use that tool? No, I simply do Control D on my keyboard and it loops it right up too. So. Uh, you know, there's many different ways to do the same thing, but uh, today we're talking about edit tools and that's how I do with the edit tools. So that is everything for our trim tools. Let's move on to the selection tool. All right, so I got the selector tool selected up here. It is lit up in blue. And this tool is probably the simplest tool to use. It basically allows you to highlight stuff on a audio or MIDI track. So if I just click and drag, you'll see that I highlighted a selection. So keep in mind, um, there are edit modes which affect on how you would highlight something here. So if I want to snap my selection to a grid, then I would wanna make sure that I have grid selected here. If I want to select anywhere on a timeline here, then I can just do this with the slip tool. So this will be off the grid. And if you guys have any questions on the edit tools, I have a video I did popping up in the top right. Watch it if you guys have time. So let's actually move on to our next tool, which is the grabber tool. All right, so for the grabber tool here, you'll see that I have it selected as it is lit up in blue. It looks like a little hand. If you click on the down arrow, you see that we have time, separation, and object modes. So starting with time, this is simply just clicking on a clip and dragging it around like this. We can move it anywhere we want it, okay? So that's what it means by time. The next mode is separation, and this one's kind of cool. So we need the selector tool first. If we highlight a certain selection within a clip, and then we do the separation grabber tool, we can drag this and it actually removes the portion we had selected and you can drag it anywhere you want it. So that's pretty cool. And then lastly, we have the object tool, 
which this actually allows us to highlight specific clips without the information in between. And what I mean by that is if we go back to time, if I click on this clip here and I hold shift down and click this, you'll see that it highlights all of the space in between. Now for object, it's not gonna do that. So we've got an object here, we click here, then we hold shift on our keyboard and click here, nothing in between. We can even go to another track and it just highlights all the clips that we clicked and nothing in between. So that's pretty cool. And it's actually pretty useful too. So that is it for the grabber tool. Let's move on to the scrubber tool. All right, so I got the scrubber tool selected up here. It is lit up in blue. And this tool basically allows you to scrub through the audio in forward or reverse at slower or faster tempos than the song. And it's supposed to allow you to find edit points, maybe issues within the audio. Um, it was something very popular back in the tape days, actually. So I don't really use it myself. I think it would be better for film editing. But for example, let me show you what it does. So I will drag it. Come out just for us and no one has a wolf touch lima. So that was me just kind of dragging through it forward and in reverse. If I want to do it really fast, if I hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and do the drag, it will be really fast. So check this out. Okay, so kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know how beneficial that would be to use, but it's an option. So that is the scrubber tool. Let's move on to the pencil tool. All right, so I got the pencil tool selected up here. It is lit up in blue. And if we click on the down arrow, you'll see we have several different options in here. And these are all related to what you're actually gonna draw with the pencil tool. So freehand is the default. So let me show you what that's like. So if we go to where it says waveform here on the track, and then we go down to volume, we can write in some volume automation with this simply by doing whatever we want. This is freehand, so we're drawing this. And then it looks like that. Uh, if we go back to pencil tool here and we go to something like a line, this is going to be a lot smoother. So check this out. Looks a lot nicer. We could also go to a thing called random, which I actually really like. So check this out. So that's pretty crazy. But if you're using like a canned hi-hat, like a sample, and it's hitting at the same velocity every time, if you use something like random here for it, you're gonna make that hi-hat sound a lot more real. So this is a very beneficial automation um, setting here. So remember that one. And let's see, then we got things like triangle and square. So, I mean, that's the extent of the pencil tool. You can do this for volume automation. Uh, you can use this for any automation. You can use your pencil tool also to write in MIDI. So if I go down to, um, let's go to notes on this MIDI track here. So check this out. So I'm drawing in notes now. So your pencil tool does a lot for you. So it's very beneficial. So that being said, let's actually move on to the most important tool, which is our last tool, the smart tool. So I have the smart tool selected up here. And the way you select this is by pressing the little bracket above these three buttons. So if I click on a button, that will disable it. If I click on the bracket above it, that will re-enable it. And the Smart Tool gives you access to the Trim Tool, the Selector Tool, and the Grabber Tool all at one time. So it all depends on where you hover over the waveform, which you have access to. So looking at this, so halfway down and up, that will be the Selector Tool halfway down all the way to the bottom is the hand tool. And then of course, if we go to the right or left of a clip, then we have the trim tool. So this is what I have set probably 95% of the time when I'm working inside of Pro Tools. Love me the smart tool. It's the best thing in here, <laughs> at least when it comes to editing tools. So 
That is it for the Pro Tools Edit Tools. And I hope you guys learned a lot today. I hope you fully understand these. And if you don't, you know, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I will definitely help you out. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.